here is a question we got from a teacher in the field. Mm -hmm. Why are the questions in STEM in English and not in the target language, let's say Spanish or French? That's a really great question. And you know, we first created STEM, was, I can't believe it now, it was 20 years ago. Wow. And this is one of the first arguments we had. We kept going back and forth on this, you know, should we be in the target language? And, and some people said, well, you know, we keep telling teachers they should stay in the target language in class as much as possible, right? And then we said, but wait a minute, this isn't a, the purpose of STAMP, it's not to teach, it's to assess. And what we finally sort of came up with all these years ago now is that we had to define the population taking the test as students in the United States with at least intermediate mid-level English reading ability who are learning a foreign language. And that, that puts a little border around the test population, but we thought that was really important for all sorts of reasons, which you can imagine, right? Like, like if you had the, uh, the distractors, if you had the choices, the A, B, C, and D in the target language, in a reading situation in particular, you could match up the vocabulary from the reading text with, with some of the choices. Yes. And then you wouldn't know if the kid really comprehended or if they were just very clever test takers and matching yeah. that up. I think you probably agree now, Of right? course. Yeah. One, one thing we're very careful when we develop STAMP is to make sure we understand very clearly what we're measuring, yeah. right? So if you think, for example, of the reading section in STAMP, we are measuring your ability to understand the texts not the instructions, right, right? right? If we give you the instructions, for example, in the target language and you get an item incorrect, right. we do not know if right. you got that item incorrect because you did not understand the instructions, right. although you understood the passage, right. or because you didn't understand the passage. So this is what we would call in technical terms, construct irrelevance. Yes. It's not part of the construct we're measuring, which is reading proficiency mm -hmm. as shown in that passage. And you're completely right. If suddenly, let's talk about stamp Spanish, yes. we were to have the questions in Spanish instead of English, you can't just flip that because yes. now suddenly there may be words mm -hmm. or even grammar, for example, in the Spanish in the questions yeah. that will cue test takers to the response yeah. even though they did not really understand what was in the passage. But you're basically exactly. giving them a higher chance of getting that question correct. Right. Right. And you know, we understood at the beginning, and, and uh, you've continued this, that no test can be for everybody, right? So for example, let's say you had an immigrant kid from Saudi Arabia, I'll just make up, okay? And you give them the Arabic stamp test, if they don't have at least that intermediate mid reading ability in English, it's not a good test for them. So we realize we, we're not serving that population, but there's no test in the world that works for everybody, right? So like if yes. it's an AP test, right? You have to take an AP course. You can't give that to a second grader, right? Or a driver's test. You have to pay, pass the paper test and you have to be 16 years old in most states to be able to take your driving test. We just, we understand this when we take most tests and it's the same for STAMP. You know, this isn't for every single human being on, yes. the, on the planet who speaks one language or another. Yes, we prefer to restrict the target population of the test, but mm -hmm. make sure that whenever those scores are sent out to the students that it's valid, right. that it means what it's supposed to mean and is not affected by anything else that right. we're not measuring, then make it one size fits all, and suddenly we don't know what the score means anymore. So let me play devil's advocate again. Let's say I've got a kid in an immersion program and all the instruction has been delivered in Spanish, Japanese, whatever. And then they get into the stamp test, and now they have to read the instructions in English, but then they have to read the text in the target language. Is that fair to that kid? What is their level of English? Uh, so let's, let's say they're native speakers of English. And let's say, we're talking about stamp 4S here. So they're middle school or high school students in the United States, let's say doing decently well in their classes, and, but they've been through an immersion program. Well, in that case, if they're English, they're taking stamp Spanish, for example, but their English is at a good enough level, it shouldn't really affect the scores. Right. Whether it's in Spanish or English, right? Yeah. If their level of Spanish is high enough, mm -hmm. if their level of English is high enough, in this case, it shouldn't affect much. Right. It's when their level of English is lower than an intermediate mid right. that we have to worry about that student and how they're going to perform. So it could work well for that immersion student. And let's remember too, now, now that you say this, I'm thinking, of course, the kid's taken lots of tests in English where it says choose the best answer or whatever. And if you're a native speaker of English, you're gonna get that, right? 
Um, but it could also be, uh, you know, for you know heritage speakers or something. You would want to be careful to maybe screen a little bit and say, you know, this kid's English reading ability is maybe a little bit low. Maybe yes. stamp isn't the best way for us to see how strong his Spanish or Chinese. Yeah, that's is. a very good point that you mentioned. Um, because of the adaptive system that we use yeah. in STEM, right? You start the test. You're going to take a certain number of questions to kind of gauge what your level is, yeah. and depending on your response you may be routed down to easier items, let's say novice level mm -hmm. items, or you might stay at intermediate or go to advanced. The more proficient you are in Spanish, for example, yeah. if you're taking Spanish for yeah. S, the harder the English will be in the instructions because you're dealing with a, a, a more difficult construct. You're doing more right. things in the real world. Now, if you're a heritage speaker um, that doesn't have so much proficiency in the language that you're testing in, yeah you're mostly going to be seeing novice level right, items right. and then the English for those items will mostly be at intermediate low. But just choose the best answer, what's in the picture. Yes, so, so you yeah. will have less difficulty with English there. Okay. Well, I hope that helps teachers understand a little bit more how our yeah. test works. Stamp isn't for everybody, but it works for a lot of people. Yes. <laughs>